Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Esther and I'm a professional artist and today I'm gonna share with you how to sell your art through social media. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the not notification bell so you won't miss any of my new videos. Okay, let's start. One of the most requested questions I get from people is how I actually sell my art and what platforms do I use or if I'm in the galleries, just things like that. So I was thinking I'm gonna share you how I use social media to sell my art because almost all the art I sell, I sell through Instagram or Facebook, but mostly Instagram. So I think I will share my strategies and just what I do to reach this goal. So if you are just starting and you're thinking what should you have to start, I will say start before you are ready. Because it's not a proper time to start. It's never will be like better time. Just start now and wherever you have already, it's I think it's enough to start. Even if you have like personal account on Instagram, just start putting your art, just start making pictures of work in progress and just for the beginning you need to post a lot and in general to make this way actually working you have to post really like every day maybe twice or even three times a day like more is better maybe not ten times but I think one to three times per day is perfect so I'm personally prefer using Instagram but Facebook in the past also work really well for me because when you're just starting and you start your art journey you can post your paintings and just say to your friends and family even if it's just your friends and family just say hey i'm a young artist i'm following this passion now and these are some of my works and if like they're for sale and if you want to support my journey they're all available for sale and it will really help me to buy new new art supplies and when you authentic and you're genuine about your pursuit in art and you're sharing your goals, people will love to support you. And don't think that it's it's too little if like friend of yours or your grandma or like your relatives buy your first painting because it's totally fine. It's it's how it's how everyone basically starts and it's okay to start small. So there is some little tips and the first tip will be consistency you have as i said before post consistently you need to take it seriously and you need to take time every day to paint because if you don't paint you don't have what to post and if you paint all of the time it's not a problem capturing these moments like your hand with a brush or paintings in progress like the beginning stage the middle stage and you like it's good to post all of this stuff it's not overwhelming people love to see the progression of the piece they love to see how you start and how it goes like and it gives them a feeling like being in your art studio and it's really more personal and it's it's just how it works people now want to know everything and that's why we post stories and we film our progress like for artists and we just film our life and if you're an artist your life is basically have to be painting pretty much and if people follow you they want to know how your day goes and what you do and how actually you do what you do so it's really important to post consistently you need to take time to do this work and eventually it will become a habit and it will be easier it might be slow at first but then you will get how it all goes and it would not take you so much time every day doing that it will be more essential over time and again to be consistent in posting you have to create content consistently so don't forget that you have to paint it's the main thing and tip number two will be quality photos and i personally just use my iphone and i edit photos after then and basically any iphone after five might be good and if you have like a really old phone and it just doesn't have such a good camera you can use a normal camera but in most cases for instagram phone will work you just need to watch the lighting and composition 
and you need to uh, crop image sometimes. I personally love using some more essential filters or presets in the Lightroom, so I try to edit every photo I post in the similar uh, style. It's all supposed to represent your brand and it just has to have this cohesive look to it. Tip number three, it's tagging. It's hashtags, it's geolocation, and it's tagging people or companies. I'm using hashtags and I see it actually work. I don't know, some people saying that after Instagram changed algorithm, it's worked differently, but it still works. I just recommend not using hashtags that have over like 500,000 images to it or like millions because your post will just not be seen at all. So I recommend like combining like really small hashtags and maybe with like middle ones, like couple, maybe 10, 20 K posts, something about that or and then like 50 K and then really small ones and then it, how it can be shown to more people. Also when you using geolocation, especially when you are traveling and you go to different cities and different places and you tag this geolocation, it will draw more local people from and local buyers from this area and sometimes other creative people it just help you to connect with the people in this specific place and expand your following in this way. So it's really good to use location. And sometimes you can also tag people, for example, or like brands or companies. For example, if I'm using paint of the specific brand and I really like it, I would tag the paint company or the paper company or canvas company and sometimes how it was in the past, like the paint company reach out to me and say, hey, do you wanna try our materials? And they send me like two boxes of acrylic paint for free, just for me to do a review about their paint. And it was really great. And they post it on their page and it works kind of like a collaboration. So it's really helpful. Just don't do it like in every single painting because it could be annoying, especially if you tag people or even worse like other artists you like and you just tag them and every painting they can just block you. It happened before with my friends so I don't recommend it. You can also tag art featuring pages that promote other artists and in this case you can tag these pages more often because they call to do promote other artists and they actually love when people using their hashtags and tagging them in their drawings because that's what they do on the Instagram and if it's made for this you can definitely use that. And tip number four is reach out to art featuring pages yourself but do your research, just find the good ones that work. From my experience I paid so many featuring pages to promote my art and not all of them are great but when you're just starting, it can really increase your following so much. Like when you research, just see how many of the reviews and how many likes and all the stuff. Like just check them out because some pages buy fake followers and it's not gonna work. But for me personally, for example, daily art really helped me a lot when I just launch my Instagram page and I start posting consistently good painting content and I have kind of a cohesive look already to my Instagram page and that's really important. You don't want to pay pages before your Instagram like ready to go because you can start with whatever and use like free methods but when you want to actually go further and pay for promotion you want your profile to be like all ready and set up and cohesive and good looking, one style, so people will not just go away, I don't know, they will actually follow you because your page and your journey looks exciting to them and they want to see where you and your art is going. And the last tip, be authentic and be yourself. Don't forget to post your own pictures too, because people psychologically even they relate to people and they want to see a person behind the paintbrush. 
they want to see a person behind all this amazing art and you know like art in the galleries it's past now people don't, don't now people don't like just go to the galleries and stare at the walls and not knowing who created this and why he or she created this. They want to connect with the person, they want to connect with the artist and they want to know a meaning behind every artwork they like. And of course they always will have different perspective and different interpretation of your artwork might be, but they still want to know what drives you and what gives you inspiration and who you are as a human being so it's really important to combine your personal life slightly incorporate it into your art portfolio so i would recommend 70 percent of your art and progress and studio scenes and just different stages of your paintings and drawings travel sketches and 30 percent of just your life and you sharing who you are and just sharing your daily life it, it's really cool like I love seeing what people live by the people I love to follow like what their life looks like and what they're doing so yeah it just creates dialogue and relationship between you and your audience and people will more likely to connect with you if you will do it this way because art used to be mysterious and faceless in the past but now it's more personal and it's more authentic and it's more alive and it's revolutionary so you have to share not just your art but your life and who you are thank you so much guys for watching and i hope it was helpful and inspiring and i hope to see you next time bye